So a lot of times I see people asking in the comments about pursuing a career in cybersecurity without any experience. Comments like, how do I get into cybersecurity if I don't have any knowledge? Is it even possible? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's possible because I was in the exact position that you guys were in. So in this video, it's a bit of a storytelling where I'll go through my educational background, what work experiences I had, the difficulties I faced before and after getting into cybersecurity, and some advice I wish I told myself before I joined. Before we get started, 95% of you guys that watch my videos aren't subscribed, so please take a moment to show your support. And in return, here's a picture of a duck. All right, so the first thing we need to address is my educational background. I graduated with a computer science degree majoring in data science. I was exposed to a lot of coding languages like Python, Java, and SQL, just to name some examples. My major had no overlap with cybersecurity as data science is more about maths and statistics. I didn't do any other certificates to further my knowledge in other areas as well. So at this point in time, I had zero cybersecurity exposure. So after I graduated, I was actually hunting for software engineer jobs. At the time, the market was pretty hot and I was getting rejected almost everywhere initially. Then I realized the main reason for all those rejections was because I didn't really have anything else to show besides my degree. And when you think about it, anyone with a degree doesn't necessarily mean they're competent. Just the same way as anyone with a driver's license doesn't mean they can actually drive. They could have just breezed through the degree by relying on other people for their assignments and exams. The tech industry was booming during that time as well, so the competition was really high. I think I applied like at least 20 companies at the time and I was ghosted by a lot of them. So that's when I knew I needed to go an extra step in my job applications. I did some research and ended up creating a website portfolio. The main goal was to have an easy central location online where people like recruiters can access and check out everything you have accomplished. The best part about this is I had to build the entire website from the ground up so it was a good opportunity to practice HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Then I started doing a lot of mini coding projects and added the good ones onto the website. This entire process took a month of actual, somewhat hard grinding. I'm talking about at least two hours a day of practicing coding, building projects, keeping those vital knowledge fresh in my head. Two hours a day might not sound like a lot to you guys, but when you have a job or a full-time study on top of that, it really reduces a lot of your free time. After a month, I went back to applying for jobs again, but this time I made sure to add in my website portfolio and adjusted the font so it's bigger and stands out. I think I applied to like five to 10 job listings at the time and I received about five interviews. I wasn't exactly sure if the website portfolio made the impact for all of them, but at least one of my interviews mentioned positively about it, so I guess it helped. With all the practice I had, I was able to ace the interview and got my first job as software engineer in a graduate program. Now at this time, I had no idea or had any intention of going into cybersecurity. I worked for a year and was focused on building my career as a software engineer until my company asked if I wanted to work in cybersecurity. The reason this was possible was because I was in a graduate program which allowed me to rotate into different fields of interest. My manager at the time also kind of noticed about how eager I was to learn new things, so he kind of offered me to the security team. Now I know some of you guys might be thinking, I got into cybersecurity just like that because I was lucky. Well, to some degree, Sure, but it wasn't as easy as I had imagined. I had zero experience and knowledge in cybersecurity. I didn't even understand what the job was about. I ended up saying yes because I was curious. And this is where things kind of went downhill for me, at least in the beginning. You see, if you've been a developer or a software engineer, your job is basically to code, to build stuff. When I started my job as a SOC analyst, it was a complete 180. There was zero development work assigned to me. It was literally doing documentations, handling help desk tickets, handling alerts, and basic incident triaging. It was actually so boring for me. On top of those, I was struggling to understand basic terminology like SIEM and how basic security systems work like firewall, networking, email and endpoint security. I was missing a lot of fundamental cybersecurity knowledge. So I knew it was time to put my head down and grind the knowledge. I committed myself to an hour a day of my personal time to study cybersecurity fundamentals like going through CompTIA Security Plus and Network Plus. At the time, I was pretty cheap, so I spent a lot of time learning this stuff free on YouTube instead of enrolling onto a course like Udemy. 
My all-time favorite is Professor Messer, so shout out to him for supporting my cybersecurity career at the start. Now I knew that I'm not exactly a study person, and usually when I try to remember content, I almost always forget them all. So in order to fix that, I had to put the theoretical knowledge into practice. For example, I was learning about Splunk and how to navigate and use the search. So I did some practice outside of office hours to reinforce my understanding. On top of that, I would actively try to understand how the underlying processes work on Splunk. Stuff like how search reports are created, macros, data models, dashboards, APIs, and apps. I was just being curious about everything and tried my best to understand not just on the surface level of the tools that we use on a daily basis, but see if I can apply some of my understanding of the underlying building blocks and look for areas where I can potentially improve on. I guess I kind of realized that it's really important not to slack off after landing a job. Especially in the field of cybersecurity, it's important to always have the continuous learning mentality so you can be that vital asset player in a team that's more knowledgeable, which kind of makes you hard to be replaced. So what's the takeaway from this story? You might be thinking that my situation is very different to yours, but the moral of the story is anyone can get into cybersecurity. Some might find it easy, some might find it hard, but a really important first step is to realize what you're lacking. I see a lot of people saying that they've been applying for a lot of jobs and not getting any responses. Yeah, that happens to everyone, but are you doing anything to change that? Are you taking this serious enough to put in the extra step and do extra work to make you more favorable? If you don't have any IT or tech knowledge, are you actively working on projects which showcases your ability to do the job? Don't be one of those people that takes a course or some certificate and think that's enough for you to get a job. Cybersecurity is not a beginner field, so you have to put in work to learn the basic fundamentals. With that said, for those that don't have any experience or knowledge in this field, you can pretty much do what I did. You can just upskill your knowledge by watching free courses on YouTube on cybersecurity fundamentals. There are a lot of these out there. Then once you feel like you've understood the concepts, start putting your theoretical knowledge to practice. You can start working on simple projects like this video here where I show an example of how to set up your own sim using free version of Splunk. Then you can upload some sample data and start practicing. The key difference between you and the rest of the people is you're actually walking the talk. You're applying whatever you say that you know on paper. And that's through small projects like this. And once you have enough of these mini projects, you can either do what I did, like create a website portfolio, or just make sure to highlight them in your resume to show that you have actual hands-on experience with this kind of work. All right, this is the perfect way to bring up this poll that I did recently. It seems like the majority of you guys are interested in an exclusive content of some of the things I've mentioned in this video. But in case you missed it, leave a comment in this video if you're interested in an exclusive course where I will provide you content and hands-on guide on the actual work that SOC analysts do. None of that BS pointless theory only stuff. We're talking about not only understanding how to use the tools to perform your role daily as a SOC analyst, but also how to build these tools so you have a much better advantage over the other candidates. So once again, leave a comment if you're interested in that. Anyway, that is all from me in this video. Appreciate you guys and anyone that has stayed for the entire video. Thanks for watching.